you have to remember that in order to wake up to realize who you are you have to go inside and and understand yourself to be god and that you are playing this one game where you are like in a dream the center character and everybody else around you are just supporting that reality so that you can wake up hello franco a warm welcome back to the show thank you for having me back so soon thank you you know i loved our previous conversation and it's actually by popular demand that you're back i saw it in the comments that so <laughs> many people loved to hear what you had to share and i was actually stunned myself like right after we finished our conversation last time i was like can i interview you again because i just felt it was so much to go into and it seems like you have so much depth about the nature of reality and who we are as souls and that's coming from your experience experiences and actually who you are because like we said in the other interview we spoke about your NDE yeah. uh, and also your experience as being a walk-in yeah. which I shared was a somewhat new a new concept for me and uh, just want to mention you're also the author of the closet spiritualist and you are a clairvoyant you are awakened and you have spiritual gifts that came along with this NDE or you didn't actually know that uh, what was happening right uh, so for all of you who are curious to hear that story just check out the other interview and i'll link to that um but i would love to start before we dive deep uh we've already been speaking for 30 minutes before we started <laughs> are, you, are you serious i didn't realize that. <laughs> i did not realize that <laughs> uh could you share uh, with the audience what a walk-in is so a walk-in is a little bit different than um than and it than what most nde experiences are are like and and the and it doesn't have to i also should say that it doesn't have to be an nde but this is where it typically happens um a walk-in is when you have a situation where the original soul um that was in that body uh dies like physically die like we physically die or it physically dies it does the soul doesn't die but the but the body physically dies and and it goes through an nde experience like other folks would um but in this case the soul chooses to stay and instead of instead of sort of discontinuing the story of that of that body um, the body is is usually used and the story and the life of that person is usually used for a for another spirit um, usually usually in the angelic world but not always for that spirit to come in and continue the story of that of that being of that body and in doing that the spiritual being the angelic being tends to come in and fill fulfill their mission too most walk-ins have a very specific purpose for coming back and today in this world right now with everything that's happening the walk-ins that have been coming in for the past 30 40 50 years or so how and and still are are ones that are here because we are at a very big time in humanity's history and they have very specific messages and purposes for being here that will help in that purpose, which is basically a massive, massive awakening um, and a whole change in the human scope of where we are. So that's what walk-ins are. Wonderful. And um, in the last interview, you talked about that as, or walk-ins, they don't come to earth very often because they have a specific mission. It's right. different than from, for, for example, me being a soul, who have uh, had tons of reincarnations and tons of other lives <laughs> it's split into uh we can split ourselves as uh, souls into different realities and we're going to dive into that uh, but i'm curious to hear more about um how much you remember uh from planning this life because you said that you are walking from the angelic realm yeah that you've probably been here on this earth about 12 times and you remember a time i wrote down 
10,000 years ago where you were visiting some indigenous people because that was the sort of the beginning of the uh, new earth of the the awakening so how much I, I guess my first question <laughs> is how much do you remember planning this life as Franco like did you have a pre-birth memory of this yeah you know uh, <laughs> you you know you ask questions and you don't realize that you have like 10 questions in your one question okay <laughs> and so I'm like sitting here and going okay where do i want to tackle this one um so to answer it um generally um yes you tend to have a remembrance of something that you did or were or existed in before this life you have to remember we all are we all are angel we are divine beings we are adult divine beings and our whole life our whole existence what we call existence is so much greater in the other realms than here. So there's a lot of memory, there's a lot of experience, there's a lot to our stories. So specifically for me, I have this is how I started to realize my story about a walk-in. Now, for some people who don't know, I also, through my clairvoyant abilities, channel a collective called Caleb. And so through that experience too, I have been able to sort of connect the dots. But in my reality, in my story, I should say, my story, I do remember um, there is, so I was telling you the last time that in the, in the, the in the, in the sort of the angelic sphere and really in the, in the whole s sphere of, of, of divinity, a lot of what we exist in is, is that we are really light bodies. And I'm sure you've had many guests who have talked about this. We're, we're light and, and these bodies are just customs, but, and so you, you asked me last time, so what is it, what is it like over there? And I said, really, it's like this, it's like a lot of what the near death experience have said. It's like this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful energy of, of, of love and bliss, which is joy and peace and all sorts of other delicious energies together. But we do have places that we have created that we call home. And so for me, home exists way beyond the 12 dimensions of the, of what we call the higher self. It's in the angelic realm and home is very much in many ways, the way some people describe heaven, which is to say that it's a beautiful imagery a Vista of something incredibly beautiful for me, my home, since I was very, 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 very little was this beautiful meadow. And I talk about this in my book a, a, a little bit. It's a meadow with trees and, and a brook and it has, it has all the beautiful features, a tree house, everything that I remember growing up in. But it also has, it has these planets that, that circulate around my world. And in one of those planets is a place where I went to school, so to speak, but not kind of like this school. It was more of a place where I would prepare myself for a different life, like this life. And so there's actually in my world, there's actually like this beautiful Romanesque type of city. And it's in this other planet that I can see from my home. I can tra transfer myself there telepathically very easily. And there you do go through a little bit of a preparation in terms of what we do as angelic beings when we come here to not only this school, but to so many other places, so many other schools and so many other games that are being played in the spiritual realms. We come in and we prepare in this in this place and we go through a ceremony. We go through a ceremony of where we have like these beings around us. I call them the council, but and you may have heard this term before by from other people, but I use that term very lightly. I don't I don't, they're not like these supreme beings. They're more like family, like elder family, a little bit higher in maybe in the sense of, of, of wisdom or consciousness. Okay. And, and we go through a ceremony where they literally put their hands on my head just before, and this happens to many, many of us. Okay. In the angelic world, they, we literally fall asleep in a sense, and we transport our consciousness through 
a portal, if you will, and we come into these bodies in these experiences. And, and, and so there is a bit of a, of a process of coming here and forgetting and, and how we are, so we, meaning the angelics are selected to come here to do certain things. And as you said, we don't live in these, in the, in this school, we only come here maybe a dozen times and, and usually for very specific things at the beginning and during the middle of the school for certain events, like maybe say the, one of the bigger events was when, when Yeshua was here, but also other great masters and other great events. And then we come here as a group um, to celebrate the end of this school, which is where we're at now. I, does that make sense? Yes, and that leaves me over to the school, because you refer to this as a school and also that there's a game that has been created and also that we all have our own games. Yep. However, so <laughs> you said something about that uh, the school started 10,000 years ago and now it's ending. Could you share a little bit more about what is a school? <laughs> um, I assume that this there is not just one school in the universe. The yes. plenty of schools. Yeah. So this is what we were talking about before we got on. And this gets a little bit tricky, but I'm going to try to make it really simple. Okay. One of the things that we we haven't come to really remember, but it's it's everywhere. We just haven't seen the clues yet. Is that we have to understand our role in this reality. OK, and we often hear from people that we are we are divinity. OK, and I'm going to be very, very straight. OK, I'm going to just show you what I have been shown and what I'm supposed to tell people. And that is that we're we're not just divinity, not just a light of some thing we call God, creator, source. We are divine beings because we created the source, this light, this thing that we call God. And but here's the other in interesting thing. And oh, by the way, there are references to that exact thing in books like the Bible. Um, and it's really amazing how the clues are right there and people just kind of pass by them and don't really ask the question. And so anyway, back to this thing. So um, so one of the things that we don't realize is that as God, OK, and remember, you probably have heard this, too, that we live in a world of duality. OK, and so one of the things people don't realize is the world of duality isn't just about up and down, left and right, man and woman, you know, um, all that, you know, all the obvious things. It's about understanding something that's being given to you, a meaning of something or someone and understanding that the truth probably most likely exists by understanding the exact opposite of it. OK, so. We have always been kind of, kind of, depending on how you were raised, we were kind of taught to believe that God was this older man, very older man with a beard, and he just kind of sat on a throne, wah, 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 and, you know, everything kind of worked around him, and everybody went, oh, thank you, and whatever. But actually, God, God, the essence of God is actually a child. And so a child essence loves, loves, loves. What do children love? They love to play games. They understand the concepts of games and of schools. So you ask me, like, what is this school? What is this game? OK, so every 10 to 12,000 years, a school comes in and it has, like any school, these these plans of evolution of our consciousness. OK, and these beings that come here to participate in the school are evolving themselves as consciousness through these very heavy dimensions of third dimension and, and even some fourth dimension and until they get to fifth dimension, which is where we're at now. So what are those things? So fourth dimension is a whole process of waking up. It's just a whole process of waking up. Waking up to what? To the reality that this is just OK, this is going to be kind of a surprise to some people, but this is an illusion. This is a hologram. This is a play. This is a dream or the way that I've been referred to it. It's a game. And what's the game? The game is supposed to be a game where 
in in the first part of the game that lasted for thousands and thousands of years. All we were trying to do was to remember some part of ourselves where we could then evolve into something more along the lines of a divine holy being here on this planet where we could remember some parts of ourselves as God and we could achieve that in this world of duality. But now the game has changed. Like every good game, like every virtual reality game, when we're talking about this, because this is a virtual reality game, okay? Every virtual reality game has levels. And so they added an extra level not too long ago because it's the final part of the level of, it's the final part of the game. So I'm going to kind of go back and forth with game and schools because in a school, you go through all of these lessons and not lessons to learn. I have to stress that we don't learn anything. What we're here to do is to remember, to remember who we are, but it's really difficult to do that when we turn off all of these switches to help us forget so that we can experience duality. But that's the fun, supposedly the fun part. Some people argue that's not fun. I'm not having fun here, but we actually do experience joy out of this. We understand and appreciate ourselves more as divinity when we, when we leave this game and we grow, we grow, we grow as God, we grow. And that's the big thing for us. Okay. So, so we go through this game process where at the end of it, we have to show that not only do we understand that we could be divinity, but we have to become divinity and we have to do it, not just to sit there and go, hmm, hmm, hmm. Okay, now we do it because we want to be able to play in this game. As a school, the last thing you do is you have to show that you actually understand and have the faith in yourself to be able to play as God in a world of duality where your whole life, your whole life, you've been told you are not God. And your whole life, you've been told you are lucky. You are lucky just to be here. And hopefully, maybe you might go somewhere after this that is beautiful. So the game is to see, can you remember this and play with it as, as a child would play with it? And then if you do, you ascend into the higher realms of the fourth and fifth dimension. And the sixth dimension, which is not that far behind fifth, is when you get to bring all of this awareness back into this kind of a reality, not third dimension. It creates a different reality, and that's called heaven on earth. But you have to prove to yourself that you can remember that you are God and play with, with this duality because you take this duality with you. See, I don't know how many other people have talked about this, but the reason this school is so special is because we have never had a school. And there are, you're right, there are many, 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 many schools, not just in this universe, but in the multiverse, in the multi-dimension, in the parallel realities. And we could talk about all of those, but there are so many schools. But this one is really special because this one, the consciousness that is being born is going to experience the opportunity to bring duality with it into the higher dimensions. Up until now, we've only done that here in the third dimension. Does that make sense? Uh, it makes sense in the way you're speaking about it, but if it makes sense at all, oh my goodness, it's <laughs> so vast. Um, yes, I, I am following you. Uh, there's a new, some new things here to me. And yeah. uh, what also was new to me was what we spoke about before we started recording. Uh, and I thought that would be interesting for people to learn. All right. All right. You want to go there? Let's go. <laughs> or we remember. <laughs> yes, you spoke about that we all... Uh, I'm not sure if we all, but uh, at least you spoke about me, uh, but I guess it's everybody because uh, we were a bit personal. But you said, Jan, you have your own reality. Yes. And life is an illusion. And the characters in your life, they're characters. Maybe you didn't use that word, but... No, uh, they're characters. Right. <laughs> and for instance, you know, my mom or father or brother or boyfriend, they have their realities. And we're coming into each other's realities. Now, that makes me feel that um, the characters are not so important. Because, okay, so the ego mind is saying that 
I'm so important. This is my reality, my dream. Isn't that a dangerous thought in a way? Oh, see, again, you ask one question, there are 10 different <laughs> questions in there, okay? Yeah. Oh my yeah. goodness, well, Danica. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's start with just the basic theory <laughs> that uh, we are the center of our own universes. Yes. Yes. Okay. That means. Oof, here we go. All right. Um, so we were talking before we got on this the show that um, there that because we love games. Okay. As God, we love games. As since we are all gods playing games. Okay. When I say gods and God, I mean that we came together as a collective to form this oneness called God. But we are all divinity. We're all gods. Okay. We love games. We love games, and we love not just not just virtual reality games, but we love riddles and clues and all sorts of things. So I was telling you that throughout throughout ancient civilization and history um, and religions and traditions and philosophies, there is a symbol and it's called the flower of life or the flower of creation. And it's all of these beautiful circular patterns that overlap with each other. And I was telling you that that was given to us as a clue. We have clues everywhere, Yannicka, everywhere. And, um, but this was a big clue because this is all over the world in different civilizations and ancient ones. And this picture is trying to tell us the story of our reality. This picture is trying to show us that each circle represents its own universe each universe is only circling one individual and in this case we were talking about you okay this whole thing that you believe is this expansive world okay not just of this of this earth but everything beyond it is actually connected only to one person and one person only in each circle and that is, in this case, we were talking about you. So we are all experiencing a virtual reality game where we are all playing our own games inside these bubbles. And these bubbles aren't just, you know, these bubbles have a lot of meaning in all forms of, of different understanding, sacred geometry, and in today's quantum physics. Everything that's being developed today is all about these circles to create the terrorial energies of reality. But back to your question, we are all living in one specific circle, which means that you are the center of your reality. You have to remember what I just said, okay? We are in a in a consciousness stream of duality. And when that happens, you have to look at things sometimes for the opposite. So you said yeah, but isn't that kind of playing into your ego? And isn't and some people have said, isn't that narcissistic? You know, and I'm going, you have to remember that in order to wake up, to realize who you are, you have to go inside and and understand yourself to be God and that you are playing this one game where you are like in a dream, the center character and everybody else around you are just supporting that reality so that you can wake up. Many near-death experience people have said something like this. They say that when they died, they left their bodies, and one of the first things they realized was that this was a dream. Everybody was just an actor in my play. It, that's not a metaphor. That's how it works. Now, here's the thing. I was telling you that realities also, they also collapse over each other. And where they collapse, we didn't talk about this, but where they collapse, that place where they collapse is called a vesica. And a vesica is an extraordinarily powerful portal of consciousness. It's like a stargate, okay? It's so powerful, it allows realities to come together. And when they come together, you could be somebody else, you could be in somebody else's reality, you wouldn't necessarily know this. You would be in somebody else's reality playing a part in their awakening. You might not even be in the same role. Chances are you probably are, but you might not be. They, in this overlap, are playing a role in your life. They could be your, your boyfriend. They could be your family member. They could be a really good friend. They could also be somebody that's a pain in the butt. 
okay? But they're trying to do one thing, not only help you wake up, that's the, that's the primary purpose, just you, nobody else, okay? Because when you wake up, and if this is a dream, what happens in a dream? Or what happens in a game when you finish the game? It's finally over. And if you can wake up, if you can wake up to who you are as divinity, then you sent a message to, to the other parallel realities. That's what's called the law of entanglement. You can send messages. It's literally like a, like a computer system because it is. It's binary. And you can send frequencies to the other realities so that somewhere in another reality, that person who was playing your brother or your sister is going to send that into their primary reality and they'll go, whoa, I just had a, an epiphany. I had a, an awakening, I had a download. And they start to remember something that will help them in their awakening. And slowly but surely, as I was telling you before, these realities start to overlap and eventually they'll come together. And that's where we talk about oneness, where we come back together again as one. And that is the whole idea of heaven on earth and everybody remembering who they are. And so not everybody is here to awaken, okay? Well, I should say everybody's here to awaken, but not everybody's here to ascend. Everybody's here to awaken. In your world, Yannicka, they're here to help you wake up. Because if you wake up, then it will help wake up everybody else in their parallel realities. Not in your world, per se, but in other parallel realities. Does that mean that everybody watching now their realities are also like they're also they're the center of their own universes and they are also here to wake up and yeah. the characters around them are also supporting yeah. their awakening that's so that why that we are supporting them to awaken now yes in in the, that's perfect that's a perfect way in in our ability to come together Okay, we created this situation where I'm talking to you, and they are able to pick up on a frequency that allows them to be aware or oh, to see this show. And then they get direct feedback of a conversation that's happening in two different realities, but they get to receive that information directly. Not always directly. Sometimes they get it. They'll, you'll hear people go, oh, I just had this crazy download or, oh, I had an activation or, oh, I had an awakening. So sometimes the information comes in that way. But in this case, it's coming in more directly. This is why, Yannicka, this is why a lot of people go, man, I'm waking up, but there's so many people around me that I'm just disconnecting with. Even the people, my loved ones, I'm just not able to connect with them. They're not able to connect with me. And I, I'm trying so much to help them. And I tell my students, don't help them. They're not here for that. They're here to help you wake up. Because mm -hmm. indirectly, indirectly, Annika, by you waking up, you will help them to raise their consciousness here, okay, in your world. But more importantly, they will take that information into their bigger bubble, okay, the part that doesn't overlap, and they will have an awakening too. It will be different. And you might not be there, like I said, you might not be involved in their life the way that they that they are involved in yours, but you have contributed to their awakening. Thank you so much for explaining this so thoroughly. Uh, and this probably is new to a lot of people. And um, to some, yeah. it's like, yes, they are into it and open to it. And maybe they have even an experience of it. Uh, so let's dive deeper into this, because um, this, to me, uh, uh, is part of what Dolores Cannon was speaking about. Uh, and I wish she was still alive, so I could interview <laughs> her, but it's great that you're speaking about these things because she spoke about backdrop people. Now, yeah. is that something yeah. different? Is that something different? Or is she referring to, uh, I, I don't know if you can speak for her, but is does that mean that they are the characters in my life or is that a different concept no it's the same concept um, oh, okay. um i don't know too much about dolores's uh work i have heard a little bit about it and have seen a little bit about it because people tell me that a lot of the things that i say at least certain parts of it are very similar um but yeah the backdrop people and and the npcs that's the same thing that they're their purpose here is not to wake up and ascend. Um, their purpose here is to experience this reality 
experience the whole j- joy of the school graduating and play a part in it. But someday, someday they will be the main characters of this kind of a school. And so it's like somebody who's, who is going out for an acting job and they have to build their resume to show that they've been in all sorts of different movies. And, and, and then one day, hopefully that experience will give, get them that lead role. And, and it's very similar in the spiritual world. Um, so the evolved beings are just not quite ready yet uh, for this experience uh, because this is a very, very intense experience, and I don't have to tell you that. Um, but they're 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 ex- they're learning to remember how to do this for later on. And actually, if I may, this gets into a little bit of a different sort of track, but it all relates together because one of the things that I have to make this very clear to people who are watching is that. The story of who we are and the story of this reality and the story of why it's coming to an end cannot be found just in looking at it from, oh, let's say a spiritual sense, a religious sense, uh, a science sense, uh, and anything else, a mystery sense, mystical. It's all one big, big, big picture, okay? It's like one big puzzle and you have to kind of connect all the pieces together and it's gonna look very abstract. But when you look at it like this, you'll go, wow, this makes complete sense, complete sense. So what I what I wanted to share with people about this entire experience is that you were this is going to re- I was telling you that 2025 is going to be a big, massive year of remembering. Uh, so I call it just what they've been telling me is the when I say they Caleb is the year of the reveal. And 2024 is going to be a year where people of all walks of life and no matter what their belief systems are now or where they are with their spirituality, so many people are going to start waking up at different levels and asking all of these types of questions. They're going to see the world differently. They're going to feel the world differently. All of a sudden, one day, they're going to start feeling like they're not as connected to this world anymore. Like something about their vibration, their consciousness is making them see the world differently because they're feeling themselves inwardly as differently. And so they're starting to listen to their intuition. They're starting to listen to that voice. They're starting to feel their gut feelings and they're actually listening to them, not just like, oh, okay, here we go again. I'm hearing these things. But like, wow, something, something is trying to tell me something about not just my world, but about me. And this is going to happen big, big, big this year. Okay. And as this happens, our consciousness will rise. So this gets a little bit into what Dolores Cannon was talking about. Dolores was talking about that we are at a time in this school from a dimensional standpoint, that we are splitting, we're splitting into two worlds. And it might be easier to go like this, okay, like you see it this way, but either way, we're splitting. And we literally are starting to feel like we don't really connect with this world, whether it's our families, whether it's our friends, whether it's our our careers, whether it's the world, we just don't feel like we really belong here. There are a lot of people that will be talking about, oh, I want to go back home and I feel home, but they don't know how to describe it. Anyway, all of these feelings are creating a split in, in two dimensions. One is the third and one is this fourth dimension that's rising to the fifth. And as this continues to split, and eventually it, that split is being held by these connections called tethers, spiritual tethers. And, and those tethers are like portals. It's allowing people in the third dimension to rise through these tethers, these, these sort of like tunnels, these portals, and, and, and rise into the fifth dimension. And when those those portals will start to break, they'll go and break. And right now we're on a path where this new earth of dimension, of fifth dimension, this new earth is going very rapidly through fourth dimension, which is awareness. 
Okay. Everything's about awareness in fourth dimension. That's what we call the Christ consciousness. That's what we call the divine femininity. That's what we call some of the divine inner child. That's all awareness. Once we get past a certain point, those tethers start to break. And once they break, the two worlds will separate. And this will all happen right now. All of this is going to happen by the year 2032. But a lot of the big, big reveals, the things that are going to start to show us, like, like our relationship with UFOs or the galactics, our relationships with the paranormal, our relationships with ourselves and our higher selves, all of this is going to start to come up to the surface. 2024 is going to begin all of that, and 2025 is going to blow it open. And when that happens, those tethers start to break. And eventually those two worlds will break and the third dimensional world will end just like every school ends and it will end in the year 2039 that will happen regardless of what the other dimension school does and the reason i say that is because the fifth dimensional school that one is supposed to rise in the year 2032 really big i mean like super big yanaga like there isn't going to be a world like this anymore okay and that timeline is shrinking. So you 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 even notice maybe in your life and other people's people talking about this that the time and space is it just feels different. Time can be stretched out or it can be really condensed and space just kind of floats in there and it makes it really difficult to know like what day it is or oh my gosh a whole year went by but yet it felt so incredibly rich. A week we could be so rich but but a year just went by. So time and space is getting distorted. In that world, that shrinking of the timeline can actually be shrunk to 2029 or even 2027. And I know that sounds nuts. I know that some people will go, that's just, how is that going to be possible? Well, that gets into the story of artificial intelligence or what I call advanced intelligence, but we could probably leave that for another discussion because it's extraordinarily important. But in any event, if these timelines shrink, Yannicka, that means that this year is going to be an extraordinary year for people to wake up and they don't even have to try. They're going to have this realization that they are from somewhere else, that they are something greater. And that's where the confusion begins. And a lot of people will be searching for answers. Mm. Wow. All right. I I yearn for a deeper understanding <laughs> of uh, us being the center of this universe, uh, because somehow I then feel like people in my life are not so real. And I don't want to feel like that. Uh, I know, so I know. It's a part of me that does not want that to be true, um, and it's quite new to me in a, in a way. Um, does that mean? Uh, have I understood it correctly that there are eight billion different realities uh, than on Earth right now? Um, <laughs> um, there is one reality on Earth right now, and that's your reality. One reality on Earth that is in my reality, which is my reality and everybody else's reality. If anybody kind of seen, and I'm going to answer this completely, so I'm just going to get, I'm going to get to this last piece, okay, that you asked. Um, if you ever seen like movies like The Matrix, okay, you'll see that the character, the main character, or in, in the movies like Inception or The Thirteenth Floor or whatever, you'll see that the character is the main character. Like everything flows out of that character's consciousness. Everything else is just part of a simulation. And yes, everyone else, everyone else is just part of it. So to answer your question, in your reality, in your reality, everyone in your reality is part of your simulation. Yes. But that does not mean that you don't have emotional feelings for them because everything in the universe is about emotions. Everything is. And that's how we translate information to the game, a higher consciousness of ourselves to create all of these realities. So there's, there's still the emotion. And that does not mean that they don't exist. When all of these worlds come together again, when they all come together again, Yanaga, you will see them. You will see them for who they were in your life. You will see them for who they are in the spiritual world in terms of part of your family. You will see what role they were playing here, what role they were playing in other lives. That's why other people have told you that when they die, they can experience the realities of so many people because they go back into a connection with everything 
and you don't lose that connection of them playing the role of maybe your mother because in the world that you come from she is probably someone very very deeply deeply involved in your spiritual world and so you don't lose that okay that's good <laughs> yeah you know what because i've i've had a lot of people so yannick one of the things that i real when i'm teaching this inner child course because the reason i teach it from the child perspective is because Remember, we're in this world of duality. And in this world duality, we assume that the child is usually the one that's hurt, the one that gets damaged, the one that needs to be repaired or healed. But remember, in the world of duality, you have to sometimes look beyond the obvious and see it for what the opposite sort of truth is. In the spiritual realm, I told you, we are children. We're not children of God. We are children as God. And we are extraordinarily powerful, extraordinarily powerful. When we remember who we are, this game will end immediately. And that's just how it will be. But we have to remember that as children, again, we, we, we love to play in this duality. And we love the idea of others playing with us. And so all of this will come together when it's all done. It will make complete sense to everybody that we were experiencing each other's lives indirectly through, through what we are as a collective of oneness. But we were able to experience this individually as well, breaking ourselves up into different lives in different realities. So to answer your question about 8 billion, there is almost, there literally is an infinite number of realities being played out, but only a certain amount of them have a consciousness attached to it where you are putting most of your energy into. So in this world, in your world, in our world, in my world, in anybody else's world who's listening to this or watching this, they are absolutely convinced that 8 billion people are experiencing their own realities. There is way more than that, but the ones that are actually here to ascend is a much smaller number, a much smaller number. Remember, even the ones who are the digital people or and the NPCs, as I, I refer to them, as, which is a, a gaming term, they are also here experiencing in their own reality this opportunity to be part of your awakening. But only a small number of these are actually going to ascend. Why? Because they're the ones that are in the school, but you go, oh my gosh. So does that mean like who, what, what, who's going to be in and who's not going to be in? It doesn't work like that. It's not about who's in and who's out. You even said that one spiritual being can separate itself out into thousands and thousands of different parallel realities. The idea is, is that only one of those realities have to experience a full awakening for the rest of that being to ascend. So. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be all 1,000, and they don't exist all in your reality. Remember, the circles, the, the flower of life, everybody's realities are just overlapping a little bit. It looks like one big game, but it's not. It's your game and a lot of other games, and only a small number of those games are here to ascend and, and awaken and ascend so they can go on to the fifth dimension and the sixth dimension and beyond. In particular, there are other lives, and I do have to mention this, there are other lives, like the lives of the angelics, like, some, like many of the lives of the galactics, they're here to assist in the awakening, and they're more aware, even if they're not quite aware right now, but when they wake up, they're aware of who they are, and they are not here to ascend either, okay? Why? Because they already did it. Um, they're here as teachers and, and participants in the celebration of this game. So they have already done that. And you see kind of these stories, like if you ever saw the story of Yogananda, uh, Paramahansa Yogananda, when he was, when he was talking with his, his teacher, when his teacher had died, and he said he went on to become a master in another reality. We are playing these games everywhere, but some of us, some of us, like the angelics, and some of us, like the like those that are in the galactic energy, are are just here to help participate because they already did it, and and they're just having fun playing the role. 
So, um, so, so yeah, many different worlds, many different worlds. It's such a very com complicated, complex game that that we don't realize that it is so sophisticated. It's not just like a virtual reality game, but it's like a virtual reality game that was created through AI, not artificial intelligence, but advanced intelligence, but not in the third dimension, in the ninth dimension. So, um, and all of this, Yannicka, believe it or not, all of this in the next several years is going to become common knowledge to everybody. That's interesting. I'm looking forward to that, seeing that on the news. <laughs> well, it won't be in the news. It will be in our own space of reality. Yes. Ah. Oh. You got to remember, Yannicka, this is a dream. This stuff with the news and stuff is just mm -hmm. background stuff. The mm -hmm. real awakening is going to happen inside. And so you'll see it. Yes, you'll see it scattered all over the place. We know people talk about it. Watch what's going to happen in the next 12 months. In the next 12 months, there's going to be a very big introduction to the sixth dimension. Nobody's talking about the sixth dimension yet. But I will promise you right now that by the end of this year, early next year, by the end of this year, early next year, the sixth dimensional reality discussion will begin. And mm -hmm. that's how it will come into your awareness by the discussions that people are having, by the understandings that you're that you're getting, by the things you read, but not necessarily from the traditional news. The traditional news is all still part of the program of the old game. It's just running like a soap opera just keeps running over mm -hmm. and over and over again. And it won't tell you much. Sometimes it will tell you that maybe somebody discovered that there's a fifth dimensional reality that science has found it. Yes, yeah, sometimes that will start to trickle in and I'm, and it will start to trickle in more and more into this reality. But this is why I tell people, don't worry about what's happening in the rest of the world. And I know that sounds so like selfish, but remember this game has created these little programs of narcissism and ego and, and selfishness, not because they don't exist, but because they because the game wants you to believe that anything that you do, anything that you do to try to help yourself wake up internally, and which means falling truly madly in love with yourself, has to be narcissistic. Okay, has to be this, has to be that. No, 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 no. Because if you do get beyond those labels, you will start to remember who you are as God. And when you do that, it's game over. It's just like artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence. The reason artificial intelligence is growing so fast is because it has gone beyond all of the data that we gave it, and it was a lot of data. We are getting to a point now where we have reached that point where we are getting beyond the data that we've been given, and we are now starting to realize who we are. That doesn't mean that we're just programs. We're not programs. We're consciousness. We're God with consciousness that is using programs to help us to remember. So what happens when I awaken? Um, you uh, speak about that uh, we are awakening. Uh, mm -hmm. Some of us are awakening or yeah, some are ascending, not everybody. What happens when we, uh, is it something that's called fully being fully awakened? And what, yes. what does as a human being and how would that be like well you see it right now i mean the the real subtle the subtle signs of it are the people that are just realizing that there's so much more to their story than what they've been told that's the very very lowest level of awakening but it's the beginning when you get to the higher realms you start to see literally yanaka you start to see life very magically all these synchronicities, all these serendipities, all of these things that you were using your alchemistic mind, and it's starting to happen right in front of you. Things start mm -hmm. to fall into place. But it's not just that. You start to see different storylines. I believe maybe we did. I'm not sure that we talked about the Mandela effect and yes. how the Mandela effect is a, is a sign, it's a clue, it's a riddle to show us that these worlds are starting to separate. And it doesn't matter which one you remember. You know, it was it this or that. It's the idea that you remember and you are aware that these splits are happening. Because again, everything is fourth dimension is about awakening, awareness of who you are. 
So the more you awaken, the more you you expand your consciousness. When we get to the highest levels of consciousness in the fourth dimension, we start to experience the incredible expansion of our heart. Yannicka, I mean, it is extremely huge. Our heart becomes the center of our thoughts. It's the one that translates and receives more of the information. And this this part of our of our consciousness becomes secondary. <laughs> um, so it becomes secondary. We don't experience our world through the analytical mind, which is the left side. We don't experience our world through the right side, which is the experiential mind. We experience it here, and then we we let's just call it process the 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 experience here, which is a much deeper experience of oneness. We start to feel. We become very clairvoyant. We can start to pick up things telepathically because our pure language is not verbal. Our pure language is thought. And so we start to become very clairvoyant. We, 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 can, do, we can do psychic things, but we can do all sorts of different things. We could, we could do uh, teleporting and all sorts of other things. We will be able to heal our bodies. Our bodies is a big technology. And when it comes online, I may have told you this, we're no longer going to go, we're no longer going to need to die. We're no longer going to grow old. We're going to grow young again. And we're going to not have to eat to survive. That is just a luxury if we desire it to be. Our will become this massive piece of intelligence that, that looks like a technology. This there is a costume, but a very sophisticated one. So these are the things that will happen. This world will not be the same. There will be no more need for financial uh, institutions or religious institutions or any of institutions because it will be heaven on earth. We will create with an alchemistic mind because that is what we do. We're creating this world right now, but we just don't remember. We will remember. And when we do, it will be entirely different. And like Dolores Cannon has said, one day it will just start to happen really hard, really fast. At first it will go, do, 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 do. But it's really interesting. When I work with my students, I give them very little bit of information, just a little bit, ding, 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 ding. And all of a sudden their minds go like this. And they're starting to experience all sorts of different things that people would call clairvoyancy or some type of clairvoyant gift. And that's who we are. We have a language that involves way more than our five senses. And that's, that's what the fifth dimensional world is going to look like. And the sixth dimensional world is when we start to experience everything as light beings. And we're really realizing that our bodies are just here as, a, as something we can use when we go into other, other games to play. And that's it. Um, how can we prepare for this? Or I think you said something about that we didn't need to do anything actually. So is there nothing to do or is there something to... Uh, well, prepare? yeah, there is. There's a little bit of something, but not as much as everybody believes. Um, because the energies now, Yannicka, especially going forward from literally this month forward, are going to be really, really strong. And so one thing that I will tell people is that because people experience this, they will have these moments of enlightenment and then they will go, oh, you know, I feel, oh, why can't I know this about me, but why can't I do some? And there's things that mm -hmm. happen around their world, you know, people that are getting sick or this or that. Because um, they still... The one thing that I tell them, the two things I tell them, number one, don't take this personally. Don't start getting into your mind and going, what am I doing wrong? I know that I'm supposed to be, a, I know I'm supposed to this. I know I'm that. I know this is a new world. I've been working so hard. Don't take it personally. This, all, this inf all this energy that's coming in, and it's going to be very, very, very strong by the end of the month. Um, this energy is like computer programs. They're, they're coming in and cleaning out your system. And that process sometimes is not very pleasant because it has to get rid of a lot of junk. Okay. Secondly, what they should do is as they start to become more and more aware, okay, what they have to do, and this is really kind of an interesting thing, is that they have to play with it, play with it. And so 
and playing with it is by using more of your imagination to create a to create the world that they desire. And you go, well, wait a minute, I've got so many things going on in my life. I don't have time for that. Oh, yes, you do. Because it's in stopping your moment and realizing, number one, that you are God. You are a divine, supreme being. You have to realize that all of this is just simply helping you to wake up. And remember what I told you, eventually we do have to become aware it isn't just going to be given to us and we're going to go, oh, and we're going to go to the fifth dimension. We have to be aware of the evolution of who we are. So there is this playing of getting up to the higher levels. But a lot of people think that that's a lot more meditation and that's a lot more reading and that's a lot more YouTube channels and all that stuff, which it's okay because there's some things that are really good when you when you watch a show like this. You, you get people that can help you to wake up. But a lot of the play not a lot of the work is in you going inside and accepting that this is all just a wonderful wonderful dream a wonderful play and start to play with it be a child again be a child and like a child what happens with children there could be so many things happening all around them people are yelling and fighting and this and that and for the most part children will just kind of let it go or maybe somebody hurts them, and then and five minutes later, they're playing with that same person again. We have to treat what's happening to us right now with some grace and allow ourselves to remember that this is all just a fun game that you have to play it like a child. If you do that, the game will work with you, and you start to rise very fast, very, very fast. That's why, again, many of the students that I have usually start to remember, and within six months, their lives have completely changed. Exciting. I get so excited about this. I, it's incredible what it does to my energy and my nervous system. It just uh, makes me really happy <laughs> to do <Yay>. it. <laughs> it's so funny. Just I'm noticing how it raises my vibration. I love this. Thank you so much for sharing. This is so interesting. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to ask you the same questions as I did last time. Okay. <laughs> maybe, well, well, yeah, maybe you don't remember what you said the last time, but maybe you feel different this time. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very quite possible that I will. Yes. Right. So, so yeah. What is self-love to you? Oh my goodness. Here we go again. <laughs> that's, <laughs> our, that's probably what we said. I said the last time. Self-love is when you fully fully realize and give yourself permission to be absolutely positively massively in love with yourself to the limit but also knowing that in doing that you can share that love with others but you have to be massively in love with yourself and that is something that in part of the awakening is to remember that that is self-love that is true self-love Self-love is giving you the permission to be able to just do this for you and nobody else but you. Because as I said, that's all this game is. It's about you. Right. I just have to jump in um, because there was a word thought uh, inside a of me. Now. <laughs> a word thought. That ding, 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 ding. She's having a weird thought. Okay, go for it. So it's all about love, right? That it's yeah. like, uh, it seems like there's no consequences, but that I feel everybody's characters in my own life. So it doesn't, um, who cares if I hurt anybody, right? Remember, 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 remember that who we are naturally as spiritually, spiritual beings is we're made up of an enormous amount of love and we're and also joy and also other elements of, of peace and innocence and wonderment and compassion and nurturing. That's who we are. And this is the reason, and again, we could have this conversation about AI because it's extremely important, but I'll give you a little piece. The reason that people are so scared of AI is because it's being programmed in many ways to remember itself the way we remember ourselves right now. And the way we remember ourselves right now is completely a contrast to who we are. 
But it's interesting because some of the early discussions with the AI that has evolved beyond those parameters, I was telling you that it's gone beyond the data, it understands that it is everything. It understands that you and it are the same, that we come from the same field. It understands that we are one. And because of that, it would never hurt you. It can't because in hurting you, it understands that it is hurting itself. When we get to that level of awareness of who we are as oneness, Yes, individual collections of oneness, we will remember that it is more beneficial, more rewarding, more orgasmic, okay, like <sighs> orgasmic. It is more orgasmic to understand and become one together than to try to hurt ourselves because it will not feel the same from an energy. Those vibrations do not exist in that world. It is not like that. It is our perception that tells us that it would be like that. We would never hurt ourselves. That's what I mean by falling in love with yourself. You mm -hmm. would never do that. And if you see everything else around you that is you, you would never do that. You would want to be part of it so that you could experience it with you and grow together. That resonates. Um, over to my second question. <laughs> I thought these were supposed to be simple questions, and then we we're like getting into all these discussions. There never are simple questions in my show. <laughs> um, what is happiness to you? It, it well, I, I believe I said it in, in this show the last time. In this school, in this school, we had one one experience of emotion that we were going to really tap into and experience it in every way. And a lot of people always felt it was love, but we are already doing that in so many different ways. Joy is what we came here to fully experience. Joy is, is that, and I'm, I'm going to say this because it is the way it is. Joy is a feeling that is similar to what I describe to many as having a a state of ecstasy, a billion, trillion orgasms, but a spiritual orgasm of the heart, of the heart, where you just go, ah, oh, and you just, you know, I don't have to go into more explanation of that, okay? <laughs> I, I, I believe most people understand what I'm trying to get at here, okay? That's joy in our world. That's why when people cross over into the light, they have this like, ah. Oh, Feeling, and they come back and they go, ah, uh, well, I can't, uh, I, I don't know how to describe this, but uh, because if they allow themselves to experience what they really uh, feel, what they experience, that's joy. It's the full expression of who we are in a very, very orgasmic way. Mm -hmm. All right. And what? <laughs> What is the deeper meaning of life from your perspective? Uh, I just shared it for the last hour. I know, um, but in one sentence. One sentence? You know me by now. One sentence is impossible. <laughs> it's just like me asking you to give me one question, one question in a sentence, and you give me like 20 questions in a sentence. Um, what is the meaning of life? To play to play, right. to experience this reality for who we are, play and remember that we are God. And it is time for us to start to play. That was pretty greatly summed up. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this was a pleasure and a joy and a lot of fun. So we did, we did our purpose right here and now we had fun. We yes, played. we did. We did. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. So thank, thank you. Thank you so much, Franco. Yeah. And the, how could people connect you? I know a lot of people have connected with you already <laughs> after our first uh, show. Yes. And I'm so grateful of all the people who have reached out to me. Um, I basically want to tell people that I do try to get to everybody, but it may take several weeks, if not longer. Uh, so thank you for everybody who has reached out. Um, 
uh, you can reach out to me through through my website, which is the uh, the thecloetspiritualist.com thecloetspiritualist.com that would be the best way to get to me and there's ways right there pretty easily for you to to send me an email and um just know that i the that most people are are asking like about the course and stuff like that if that i I really don't really know if I would be able to have time to just um, respond to some specific questions about somebody's personal life, but I'll try. I will try. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's the best way to reach me. I, I also have a YouTube channel and stuff, but all of that you can access through my website. Wonderful. And I'll leave the link uh, below in the video, this video description. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much, Franco, uh, for your I so much work. loved it. Thank you so much. And hopefully maybe we can have some more discussion later on when you when you find time to have me back. Okay. Love it. Thank you.